All right, folks, we're sitting inside the 2010 Chevrolet. It's a Silverado. It says it's a 1500 V8 flex fuel VIN 3 LC9 engine, 16 valve overhead valve. Uh, guy stopped in yesterday, said his oil light came on. I told him he probably has a problem with his oil sending unit, as a lot of these do. He said the engine wasn't knocking or making noise. Um, so that's good. And he decided he wanted to set up a point to check the oil for him. I just completely buried in work so I couldn't look at it yesterday uh, I was gonna have him stop back and then here the truck sits because he went to leave and this happened nothing it won't start now so it's dead in my driveway it looks like it's gonna open up into a friggin storm out here I don't want to push it in because I just figured if we could look at it in the parking lot we're gonna be good um, I'm gonna pull up the wiring diagram on the screen for you guys so you can see it. I got the starter circuit here. Um, let's just see, how does it get to the starter? All right, so you see the starter motor in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, we've got battery cable going to it, then we have a purple wire going to it. And that purple wire comes from the starter relay, pin 87. Uh, what turns that on? That is turned on You'll see on the right hand side of the relay there's a yellow wire it's black that comes from the ecm we do have a security light that is on and it's on solid okay so this is a uh, ecm controlled starter i'm just looking over the rest of the diagram okay body control module senses the start input once it receives that, it sends data. You see the data lines going to the ECM. The ECM says OK. Then the ECM turns on the relay control, turns the relay on, relay cranks, and away we go. But like I say, we do have a solid security light. And I, don't know if that, I don't know if on these, if that's start inhibit or what it is, but I guess first thing first, uh, I'm going to go grab a scan tool. We'll plug it in, make sure it's receiving the start command, and then take it from there. So I got the Alltel plugged in. We'll let her get uh, fired up here. I'll have to put in all the RPO codes and stuff. It's going to ask a bazillion questions. I'll get that in. We'll go right to the BCM, see if the BCM is receiving the start signal, see how many codes are in this thing. Uh, so this is in the body module. We have uh, two codes that are current, uh, device ignition one, circuit sh uh, short open short to ground or open uh, device ignition accessory short open to ground so it sounds like we're missing a power uh, so we're going to look into that uh, that could be a huge clue for us let's just make sure it is getting the uh, start data um, where are we at here inputs probably uh ch -ch -ch. nope let me uh, poke here real quick bit dummy it's under power moding um current power mode run crank off run crank run crank okay let's see we're in key out accessory Run, crank, crank request, okay. All right, good. Okay, so our ignition switch is fine. Uh, we're gonna concentrate on our trouble codes, which I'll save then, then we're gonna pop into the ECM. Because if this, whatever this power feed, this ignition one circuit, if that's, uh, you know, one that powers the ECM, this would all make sense too. Uh, let's see, I just got to label this one, John, we'll call this one John, there's that way there I can reference that later, back back out, let's go to the ECM, see how many codes we have here, probably the same one, but I think that ignition feed feeds them both, just odd that it died right in my parking lot. Engine oil pressure switch performance, there we go. Start relay control circuit, ignition one switch, 
circuit two, the sort of relay control though is passed this time. Ignition one passed. Failed their current, engine oil pressure switch, okay. Alright, let's uh go to live data. Let's try to throw out what do we want? So we'll just go engine, it's gotta be there. Battery's just about dead in my camera. Let me find what I'm looking for. I'll kick this back on and save some battery. All right, here we go. Start a relay command. Crank request. I guess we could have came here first. Crank request, yes. Start a relay command off. That's interesting. Why would it? Why would it not command it? It's receiving the request. There's no theft problem. I would think even if it was missing voltage, it would still do a relay command. All right, well, we know that the ECM is receiving the command, uh, so that's good. Let me get uh, get my bearings here. We're gonna figure out what's going on. So I'm just doing a little reading here, see what's going on. And I was looking at some data, and I did notice. So in the crank, we do have crank request, and that is run. But I see ignition accessory run inactive, ignition run crank inactive. No matter what I do, and then I come back into accessory mode, it does show accessory, which <laughs> works but it shows current power mode is off, which is kind of bizarre. So run it shows, but it does not show accessory as current power mode. Um, and the ignition run crank inactive. So that's kind of bizarre. I'm gonna do a little more digging here. So looking at the diagram here, on the body module it shows ignition one voltage as this pink wire. Let's see if I can highlight that for us as this pink wire <laughs> like playing whack-a-mole so the wire got highlighted ignition one voltage goes to the BCM and it comes from the uh, ignition switch here which I would assume works because it reads the start signal unless it's reading the start signal off from this wire and it does read run position which it could be reading it from this wire So that sends uh, BCM takes must be takes the power in and sends the five volt signal out back to the start circuit. So there's a couple pieces here. Um, I would think our power going to the ignition switch would be fine. Um, where are you guys at here? I guess we can find out where that is. Let's just look back at data real quick just to see if we can see the um, ignition three voltage, which should be a five volt signal. I don't know if that's gonna be in data here or not. Um, off run crank reference, 5.36 volts. Wonder why it's not five exactly. Now that doesn't change, does it? No, that doesn't. Okay, but our crank voltage is 3.25, which I would expect because I see on the diagram here it does run through a resistor. Our run signal must be discrete signals that it gives it. Um, you know, like multiplexing, I'm assuming. I tell you what, let's just let's just find what powers this ignition switch. So according to this diagram, DLIS fuse 35, it's only a two amper that feeds that whole ignition switch and that ignition switch feeds the body module. Uh, let's just go check that real quick. Uh, fuse 35 and it is, where is it? Oh gosh, here we go, underhood fuse block, left side engine. Okay, let's go look at that. Don't mind the wind. Say there's a storm picking up. Let off, holy shnikes. What in the frig is going on over here? You guys got to see this. If this ain't the problem, it's going to be. Look at the 
freaking corrosion in here. Must be the lid was off it for a day or two. Holy crap, this guy. Try to tuck you guys in down out of the wind. Uh, this ain't looking too promising, I'll tell you that right now. Let me just get a ground on my Tesla here. Got a ground, we do. Got power. Got no power there. Those are. Uh, Okay, where's uh, it's got to be a two amp fuse here somewhere. So there's a two amp right there. It's got to be the only one. No power. No power. I just want to make damn sure our tessellate's good. Check a couple other fuses here. How do I have no power in any of these fuses? Oh, that one's got power. That one's got power. There's a two amp right there. No power. Got power on that side. Oh, we got a blown fuse. Power there, no power there. I brought pliers with me in case we got in this situation. Is it blown? Boy, it doesn't look it. It's gotta be though, right? Unless it's all just freaking corroded apart. Let me just stick it back in there, just, just to be certain. Definitely have no power on that side of the fuse. Got power on this side, no power on this side. But boy, there is some crusties are seeping out of this box. Let me go see if I got a two amp fuse. I've got one. Hope it doesn't blow it right away. Didn't hear it snap. Power on that side. Power on that side. Like I say, this thing doesn't look blown. It looks all corroded all the way up through it. I can see all the corrosion up in there. This whole box is a freaking mess. Uh, let me just see if it starts or cranks. Oh, wait a minute. It's my camera. <laughs> Better not do that. Camera sitting right on the belt. Okay, move that. Top back in here. Ugh. Nope, still nothing. Let's see, do we have... Okay, ignition, run, accessory. These were the ones that were saying inactive before, right? Now they say active. Oh, well shit, now it starts. <laughs> Maybe I had to shut it off. I tell you what, being I got it running, I'm going to pull it inside. Now we're inside. Let's shut it off. This way I can be dead in my bay. These are the two that were inactive before. Okay. Let's just, yeah, so now they work. Accessory, run, active, off, inactive, accessory, run. Okay. And now let's dissect our fuse. I have said fuse. I have new blade. Uh, two amp fuse is pretty small on the inside. I'm going to swap this out. What's up? Um, the owner of the 2500 is on the phone. Which one of the three 2500s would we be speaking of? The blue one with the transmission leak. Oh, okay. Alright. We're back. Give me a seat. Pull my bridges. We got to see if we can look in here to see if this is corrosion. I am most certain that it is. Place your bets whether you're going to see blood or not by the end of this. I'm betting that we are. I do not have the hands of a surgeon. We're going to cut that side of it. Because if I find this is corroded and it didn't open because of over amperage, then we're going to be going for a new box because that thing is a friggin' mess under there. There we go. Enhance. See if I can keep you guys in the screen. Ah, it's like picking a scab. There she is, yes sir. Uh. 
Oh yeah. She's white and crusty on the inside. It is open right there. And I believe. I believe I can fly. Enhance. Enhance. Yeah, she's focused. Look at all them white crusties. That fuse corroded itself in half. Alright, where it hooks on. She is full of it. Uh, let's see. Ding dong, ding dong. Everybody's a ding dong. Yep, even if it was at the correct amperage spec, uh, just with the corrosion that's in there. You know, could have created heat and just sizzled itself apart. You know, I'm not seeing it broke in the center uh, like a, you know, typically when a two amp or maybe most fuses break when they break, they usually break, you know, around the middle. Uh, seeing the amount of corrosion that's inside of this thing. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm going to blame this one on corrosion. I'm not going to get too excited about it. We can check the amperage draw on it, but. We can do it just for poop and laughter. Those mo yellers. Let's see how they fit. Oh, like a tiger. Okay. Red before yellow, kill a fellow. Red before black, voltage and lax. It's the old mechanic saying. Uh, so we'll do one in that hole. Uh, we want to go amps. Amps. 10 amp, 250 volt. There it is, we're at zero amps. Let's turn the key on, let's make sure it runs. Two amps should start now. Is that back connection? We're in the milliamp range. We're drawing 1.78 milliamps. Not much, fella. Not much at all. Um, nothing in the wrong hole. There we go. <laughs> 122 million. Um, that's interesting though. Watch this. Once the vehicle started, it doesn't need the fuse. That's what happened. That's how we got here yesterday. It started. He drove it. I've got the fuse out of the hole right now. Uh, we see we're drawing very, very low current. You know, obviously not a short. We would have blown this fuse. Truck will run without it once it starts because the BCM has already received its signal to start. It's seen it was was good to go and it doesn't need this input anymore to run because this isn't a, a load carrying circuit um, this is just sending the signal to the body module to say hey I'm an accessory I'm off I'm run you know here I am look at me here I am so with the fuse out it runs okay it's all making sense Should we not metal things and things we all not be meddling in? Uh, because I am seeing the white pus come out of that stuff. What's that 30 amp circuit before we pull that out? That one looks gross. That's number 50. Rear defogger. Okay, so if we pull that out, we can't hurt anything. Let's see. Look how nasty this one's looking. Let's have a little look under this one. Oh, yeah. She is fluffy and white and crusty. Dang, girl. Oh yeah, she's gross. 
What really is that? So there's some white stuff going under this one. Then it... Oh yeah, don't touch that fella. <laughs> yeah, I really want to. Nope. That one's permanently attached with the corrosion. Uh, this thing's gonna get a fuse box because this is gonna be a disaster. When you start seeing the white stuff coming up out and around the fuses and you got relays that you can't even pull out. Oh, there she goes. Uh, we're gonna break the freaking terminals off it. We're gonna leave it because uh, I don't want it dead in my bay. Obviously. Well, obviously, the cover was missing off from this truck for some time, from the looks of it. All right, folks, the problem is obvious here. That fuse corroded. It didn't open. And we can see, you know, only drawn a little over 100 milliamps, 122, whatever, you know, less than a quarter of an amp on a two amp circuit, that's fine. Uh, and like I say, that circuit doesn't carry current. The only way that I mean, it does, but no substantial amount of current, you know, it doesn't turn anything on. It does. Basically everything I just told you a lie. It's not a high current circuit. Uh, there's not a device turning on and off. So the only way that can blow a fuse, let's say the BCM short circuited or that wire rubbed through, or in this case, it corroded through. The corrosion coming up through the box, you know, just ate away at that wire until finally it opened. Uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm not gonna look into it any further. I'm gonna order a fuse box from Chevrolet. Makes me wonder, like when this thing was at the used car dealer, cause I know he bought this truck used. Did I have a lid off it? And somebody went in to their wrecking yard and got a lid. Uh, and for whatever reason, it is not uncommon to see these trucks come in with no lid on the box. And I don't know why. Uh, and this is what happens. They just turn into a mess. Uh, fuse box is a piece of cake change though. As long as it didn't get crapped on the connectors, but I'm not going to pull that fuse box out and look at the connectors until we have a new one because I don't want the thing dead here in my lot. I'm going to give it back to him. He's going to take it and drive and be happy and then come back and we'll put that in. Why don't you make me happy? Go down to that comment box. Leave me a comment, a question, a concern. Criticize me. And, um, and that's it. Going to motor on. Ring the bell. Subscribe. Turn your notifications to all so you don't miss a single episode of the SMA channel. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.